Hello, Cancers. Welcome to your March. I also feel um, you're missing home. I, I feel like you're possibly on the road, missing home. I feel like you're you're missing the the, the sense of security. Um, I feel that some for some reason you feel inadequate with this person. They might be very successful, they might be very grounded and stable, and they might have their life together, and you feel, for some of you, not all, you feel like you don't, and that's what you're you're trying to go and, and make and create for yourself out in the world. And you might be traveling excessively, and you might be missing home. Um, pay attention to, you know, getting enough sleep. Um, I feel like whatever you're doing out in the world be honest with yourself you know what is it that you're hoping to achieve are you just trying to achieve financial abundance or are you just trying to prove to others that you can do it because these are things that you really have to re-examine re why you're doing it and if it's making you happy because I feel like this is constant yearning for home for comfort for a place a permanent place to rest your head you know and um all this traveling is really, it's not conducive for any of that. So think about what it is that you're sacrificing and for what ends, okay? That's um, going to be something coming through. I feel like you you are, um, there's there are people around you with a lot of financial abundance. And I feel like it is something that you want to emulate. And it's an energy that you want to capture for yourself so that you can create more financial abundance for yourself and for your own future as well and as a result of that just make sure you are not neglecting you know the spiritual growth the uh, emotional relationships in your life either okay so I'm going to pull out one more card and this one okay so we have good cards all right so this is how this is going to work I have four clusters here each of them will you know depending on the card that shows up each of them will address one aspect of your life. We have the advice column here, uh, row here, and this is the direction that you're supposed to take, okay? And this is basically your universal guidance coming through for this month and possibly for the next few months. So let's talk about the first cluster here. I definitely feel a lot of restlessness, lacking sleep with this Nine of Swords. This is a lot of staying up very, very late being unproductive as well so I feel like not only is it insomnia but it's stress and it's also not getting restful sleep so the environment around you can be quite loud you might have animals children as a uh, sources of distraction for you you might be also plugged in electronically dealing with a lot of communication when you're supposed to be sleeping so a lot of communication late at night keeping you up there's also you know just Overall, lack of sleep, stress, worry, anxieties as well. It's paired up with the chariot, and the chariot deals with travel, communication, long distance. Okay, both of these cards show to me that you are potentially very destabilized. Like you don't have a sense of home right now. You might be traveling a lot for work. You might be traveling for in your field of work. Or overall, there's a lot of demands placed on your time and people are dispersed geographically. So you have to like make um, trips frequently in order to do whatever it is that you're doing. If you're in the transport business, you know, this is understandable, but make sure you um, turn off the phone or turn off the computer or whatever and don't um, allocate the time for you to get proper sleep because this is going to take a very, very heavy toll on your body in terms of, you know, creating ailments, stress. And um, with cancers in general, a lot of anxieties and worries can manifest themselves in physical symptoms, okay? So mental energies can affect physical health. Well, you want to be very careful about that. At the same time, the chariot is a card about success. This is about um, figuring out where we stand in the world, figuring out that little, um, you know, where we, we fit in the greater scheme of things. So I feel like there is some worries, anxieties about feeling adequate. And I know that water signs deal with overall a lot of insecurities, but I feel like this is something that you want to create for yourself. You're making some sacrifices, sacrificing sleep, sacrificing stability in your life in order to achieve some type of long-term goals, okay? And just be careful that your head is in the right place, that the end goals is worth the sacrifices, all right? What is coming through with the second cluster here is... Um, 
We have the King of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune. So these are very, very positive cards. So <clears throat> in terms of the way that I'm reading this, even though it's a person, I feel like this is a card about ambition. This is a card about long-term planning, creating some type of a name, a recognition, or um, wanting the, the situation, like the wheels of fate in your life to turn in your favor. And I feel like for a lot of you, um, you, you felt stuck for quite some time. And this is the month in which you're taking charge of the situation you're forging ahead and you're methodically planning out you know i've been waiting and things are just not happening fast enough or in the way that i want and i'm i'm done waiting for um for the right opportunities i'm just going to get out there and grab them okay so i definitely see a new surge of energy within you and um on an energetic level you are also very ambitious you are very career oriented you are also um at a point where you are planning you know 5 10 15 years down the road because this is about long term action consequences and i don't feel that um it's bad but i do want you to be very careful with the people that you're dealing with and make sure everything is done in a practical methodical way and don't take unnecessary risks i feel that risks overall calculated risks would be okay but if you're getting feedback from the external environment and you're not feeling it trust your intuition because um you have um as a water sign your your card came up with the chariot this is a representative of cancer and this is a situation where, you know, you are going to have to be the one to make uh, up your mind and to decide for yourself what is right for you. Inputs from other people can actually be stressful, so you want to mitigate the effects by being a little bit more decisive and directed with your energy and what you want your life to look like rather than what other people are wanting your life to look like because you're ultimately going to have to answer for yourself by the end of your life, so you want to make it in a way that is authentic to you okay um external to your environment is um a fire sign as well so this is sagittarius leo and aries so there might be some um opportunities for partnerships for travel even for uh some type of something is in the works and i feel there is a very strong fire sign in the mist it can be male or female but um i feel like for a lot of you it's a business association as well and I feel like this person, overall, it seems to me like it's solid, okay? It seems to me as if um, you're crossing paths with them, and it's by no accident. It's divine intervention allowing you both to come together in some way, business or love or even friendship. But I feel like they're there to help you. They're giving you guidance. And the interesting thing is um, you're a water sign. They're a fire sign. So this is polar opposites coming together and working together and you're kind of forced to work to with one another and overcome obstacles and differences between you and them and the ways that you operate on an everyday basis so um, it takes some getting used to but once you know how the other person operates then i feel like th this situation can take off in a really nice manner um there is like obstacles at first but i feel that if you work with it okay Opposites attract, so I feel like it, it's not just um, fate or it's not just a, a light situation because the Wheel of Fortune indicates something that is fated. Um, third cluster, we're dealing with the Prince of Swords, which is the Knight of Swords in the traditional tarot and the Prince of Pentacles. So you have some business opposition, uh, propositions excuse me, coming through possibly with an air sign and uh, even earth signs. I'm seeing this more as energies. I'm not reading this as people. And I feel that for a lot of you, there is some type of concrete um, plans that is in the works. You and another person, okay? So once again, I'm not really getting, because they're um, pages and knights. Yeah, they're, they're both knights, excuse me. So they're both knights. So the prince of pentacles, knight of pentacles, and knight of swords. I feel like this is basically um, strategy. This is dealing with planning something and making sure that it has long-term sustainability, okay? The sword energy deals with ideas. The pentacles energy deals with, like, executing your ideas in a way that is practical, okay? There is a lot of movement happening in this spread for you. So I feel that for a lot of you, there's 
many interactions with other people, other signs, people who are very different from you. I also feel as if you're dealing, there's a lot of male energies here. So I don't know if I'm reading this for males or females, but I feel like external to your environment, a lot of masculine energies, a lot of ambitious, goal-oriented people. And I also feel that people who might be driven by status, who might be driven by financial, you know, um, status, their their financial standing, and it's just a lot of people who are like um, very fiercely independent. And I also feel that it might be just you know going through the motions, trying to accumulate wealth. And you want to be careful about not neglecting other things in your life, such as your emotional health, your physical health, okay? So money is nice, but once again, it's, um, it's not the end goal here. So you want to be careful about this. I feel like you're trying to build up a financial future, and there's a lot of movement, a lot of travel associated with it. And it might allow other aspects of your life that might be important down the line, you know, relationships, family, uh, stability and health even to fall on the wayside so be very careful about that um, cancers what is coming through as well as the nine of pentacles and the nine of cups and these are both nines and they're both I, I feel like one of them is you and the other one is the person that you are dealing with okay so somebody I feel going back to what I mentioned before there is somebody in your life I feel like somebody who's quite beautiful attractive I, I feel like beauty attraction somebody who's very independent and um, it seems to me as if they are very stable they possibly they possibly could own a property already they they have a lot of grounding energy it might be an earth sign um, Virgo Capricorn Taurus and I feel like with the Prince of Pent Pentacles here there might be somebody making you an offer okay this is an offer partnership or work situations in, in love or in work but I feel like this person is very very grounded and this person is very accomplished so whatever field they're in they have a lot of money and it can be an investor that finally comes through it can be an investment opportunity that comes through or a financial um, proposition like you know some type of a financier giving out money so that you can invest in something that you you plan to get off the ground and you're you're feeling very happy I do feel though these are like um, opposing energies. It's a pentacles and also a cups energy. So this deals with somebody wanting stability and somebody wanting happiness. And it seems like which one should come first? Do I achieve stability first or do I want to go with it and just be happy for now without the stability? So you're making like an, uh, an assessment here as to what you want to pursue first. And it's a great thing to do, but going back to this card, and um, I feel like it, it's it's kind of like they don't have to be mutually exclusive. They can work in conjunction with one another. The chariot card is being pulled by um, horses of opposing colors. You have a dark horse here, and I know it's hard to see. And that's why I like to use the traditional Rider Waite deck, mainly because the graphics is easier to decipher. So you have a, a dark horse and a white horse. And in this situation, you have the Nine of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles. So it's like you don't have to sacrifice one thing for the other. They both can work together in conjunction, in tandem with one another in a very harmonious way. It just requires a little bit more creativity on your end in order to make this work. So find a way to make this work, okay? I feel like you're grappling with this dilemma. And I feel as well that, once again, um, think outside the box a little bit and strategize in a way where you can blend these two okay so emotional fulfillment and financial stability can come in all at once I feel that somebody is offering you both but you're seeing possibly two different choices or at least you don't see how it's going to work just yet so the offer is on the table and I feel like this might be you if you are a cancer, if you, regardless of whatever gender you're dating, okay, or regardless of whatever your sexual orientation is, but if you identify as a cancer male, I feel like an offer coming through to you from a very strong person, somebody attractive, strong, stable, okay, that is going to give you a lot of stability. 
and you're happy about it but I don't feel that you're going to be budging yet so this is a smug card this is a wish card as well so this is feeling very very happy elated and just kind of like um, I know that when cancers, even though you know the best case scenario happens, um, you still play your cards very close to your heart, so you don't express anything until you're one hundred percent sure. So I feel like at this point you're still thinking it through. If you are a cancerian female, I feel that your financial situation is very, very stable right now. You have a lot of admirers around you. I, I do sense that. A lot of people think that you're very attractive, but I feel that they are afraid to approach you because they might feel like, you know, um, they might feel like there is somebody else in your midst, either that or you might not, you, you might be married and you might be single, but they think you're attached to somebody else because um, I feel, and this is sexist, but I, I do sense that the men around you or the people around you might wonder, you know, where does she get all this money? And I feel like that's coming through from their own insecurities and that's why they're not approaching you. But I, I do send you have a lot of admirers around you. Um, moving forward, in terms of the advice here, so this is going to be read in a row. And um, what I'm feeling first is this. This is the energy that you are picking up okay um, or you are exuding you're showing up in your own spread as the king of cups this is somebody who is very emotionally in control this is somebody who doesn't let his or her feelings get the best of them so the king of cups this is the water sign okay and I'm reading this more as your own energy cancers because I feel like you're taking a step back and I also feel that you know what you want at this present moment and you crave a, a home. You crave stability and I feel like if you've been on the roads traveling, not knowing what lies around the, the, um, the corner and not knowing what city you're going to be in the next day, I feel that it's taking a toll on you. But at this point, you have that freedom of movement so you, you like it and I feel that you're making sacrifices to secure something that you know to be true and real, okay? And I feel like this is the month in which all the practical things that you've built up over time, all the sacrifices you've made, they're starting to come to fruition in a very beautiful, in a really good, enriching way. And you're seeing that, and now you can finally come home. And I also feel that at this point, you can no longer ignore those tugging, you know, things in the back of your head or in those things tugging at your heartstrings where you're just like, I really want some emotional stability. I, I really want, you know, somebody to share my life with. And it doesn't have to be necessarily marriage, but it's just like you want somebody to be there. You want something real on the emotional front. So you feel like the money is there, yes. But am I really emotionally fulfilled? Um, do I have somebody that I can count on? Do I have another person? In case, I feel like, honestly, not to scare you, I feel like you might get sick because you're overworked, you're stressed out, you're traveling so much. And then when you, when water signs get sick, well, when a lot of people get sick, actually. But I don't feel Scorpios getting grouchy when they're sick. I feel like cancers. Um, when you get sick, you really feel it on a heart, body, and soul level. So when you get like a, a cold, the flu, you it's bad. And um, I feel like that's what happens. And, and it's forcing you to re-examine these things, you know. When I'm sick, who do I want to be there with me? Do I have somebody in my life that can take care of me? You know, so security... Emotional security concerns are coming through for you and it is coming through mainly because I feel like for the past six months you've been avoiding it. You've been trying to um, trailblaze, forge a path for yourself to secure some type of financial security and these areas are being neglected and that's why you know when they come up it means you need to re-examine it, okay? But overall, <clears throat> the direction that I'm seeing here, we have Six of Cups, Eight of Wands, and the King of Cups. You're getting some communication. There is going to be talks, um, rapid-fire communication coming through from somebody from the past. 
this indicates to me not only a past person coming back in, there's communication coming in mutually from you to them, them to you, etc. It's also indicative of a very strong uh, connection that you have with somebody where they're like the anchor in your life and they provide a, a home. They provide, you know, the love care that you've been craving. And I feel like maybe you might get sick and then you might revert back to this childhood state and you're figuring out that, you know, these are the things that are important to me and I really need to take heed of that. So that can play out for, you know, different people in different ways, but I feel like at the heart of it is emotional security. That's what you really want. And you've been avoiding that. If you've been doing that for the past six months, it's coming in and it's screaming out and you can't really avoid it this week, uh, this month. But there is something from the past that is going to make you feel really, really good. But I feel that you're still not going to act on it because you have some things in your own life that you need to take care of it, that you need to take care of. And as a result, I feel like the communication is coming through from somebody from the past to you. And you're happy. It's making you very, very happy. It makes you feel loved and appreciated. And it's bringing back that sense of nostalgia. As for what you decide to do, obviously that is going to play out individually um, for different people, for different Cancerians out there. But I do sense that whatever makes you happy, go with that. Okay? Because feelings are real. And especially for you as a water sign, denying your feelings is denying a whole... Um, your own truths, your own identity, okay? So go with those feelings and see what you can manifest from them because I, I feel like financially things are really stable. Things are very, very good. And I feel like your physical health, your feelings are being neglected as a result. Um, so let's just leave it at that and let's go on to the love readings, okay? Um, I hope you make the right choice, Capricorn. Uh, cancers, excuse me. So let's see what's going through for you for the love reading. So, Cancer's love reading. I'm going to pull out five cards for March 2016. Cancer's love reading for March 2016. And by the way, this is the Teramusha deck. It is a very good deck to do love readings with, and I, I really like it. I'm not going to be reading reversals, not with this deck. It's uh, non-traditional, so I'm going to read images as well as try to incorporate um, the traditional meaning when I can, okay? Okay, so you've got some options. Hmm. So first of all, cancers, um, something that has ended in your from your past is being re-examined and you thought it was over you thought it was done dead and now it's coming back for re -exam mainly because they've been hurt before so that's the energy circulating around you um, in terms of the energy going horizontally that's in alignment with the rest of this we have the four of cups and the four of cups is about having a lot of options you know having a lot of offers on the table for you but I feel like your these offers I feel don't compare to what you had in the past so I feel like a past situation might emerge out of the darkness it caught you off guard and you have many options on the table and you're reassessing and at this point, honestly, I feel like a lot of you want to branch off on your own and you're, you're trying to, you're still trying to find yourself. You're going through like some type of uh, lethargic, like soul searching journey and uh, you're okay being on your own and you don't really want the hassle of dating. A lot of you might be traveling a lot and you might not be in one place long enough to even cultivate anything. So you don't really want to start things that you can't finish. And I mean, that's a responsible thing to do, but I feel a lot of options are on the table for you especially for female cancerians i felt it um, with the previous spread where you know you showed up as the nine of pentacles and you're very very well received and every time i see the nine of pentacles i think of 
this person as somebody who's got everything but they're missing one thing in their life and they might not know it and they they are very very distant so it's hard for people to approach them even though they're very attractive very desirable very stable um, it's just it's, it's hard for people to approach her because they feel like she is guarded okay um, you have a lot of options so if you're single go with one of these options and I feel that you have to take a more lighthearted approach when it comes to love and relationships overall and just you know date around see who you jive with and try to take it from there don't go in it um, you know expecting a full-blown relationship or even I guess like take a more lighthearted approach and just see where it goes so have a little bit more faith let your guard down as well I feel like a lot of you guys have uh, your guard up especially the women and the men that you're dealing with are a little bit I feel like they're a little bit pushy so don't let them push you into anything you're not ready for either the foundation here we have the ace of swords and the ace of swords deals with some communication some t type of communication breakthrough this can be, you know, if you've been dealing with a difficult person or if you've been dealing with um, people who are very strong-minded, who are a little bit combative, I feel that there is going to be some type of truce reach between you and the other person that will allow the relationship to move forward and to advance to the next level. There is going to be a very strong discussion where you can hash things out, where you can figure out, okay, what do you want versus what do I want? Are we on the same page? Should we continue this? And is it possible for me to date this person so you know definitely some clear succinct communication coming through that will allow you to step away from this juggling act and to go with one of your options okay for those of you who are in coupled stable relationships I do feel that um, <clears throat> I feel like there's some combative energy in your work environment and um, you might be dealing with difficult clients, difficult people, coworkers, and things like that. And then when you come home and you're um, you're trying to vent to your partner, but your partner might not understand the full extent of the the stress that you're dealing with on your in your work environment. So it's hard for them to be supportive. Um, I feel that you know it's it's always good to to vent to people when we have problems and things like that but I do feel there is is almost that emotional disconnect where you know you're frustrated all the time and you're talking to your partner but they don't really get it it's like they're listening to you but it seems as if they're kind of emotionally checked out so I would say you know if you you're feeling this way um, try to try to vent to somebody else try to vent to somebody who understands what you're going through or at least minimize the venting because I feel like it is causing some type of strain within the the work the uh, relationship okay I also feel that there is time constraints you're dealing with a lot of projects and um, there's some time constraints where you might not have time to um, talk to your partner face to face. I feel a lot of electronic communication as well with this Ace of Swords. So make sure you you make the time to do that. I also feel like for a lot of you who are in committed relationships, okay? A lot of you might have recently, um, you or your partner might have recently left a job and now one person is like um, carrying the weight of that relationship, which can be a little bit stressful. So I feel like some imbalances in the relationship when it comes to financial situations affecting the love in the relationship as well. So this is something that you and your partner have to figure out. But I do feel that communication is going to come through, which is going to allow this situation to turn around for the better. I also feel as well, you're, especially Cancerian women, if you're kind of like, you know, if your partner has recently lost a job, I do feel that options will come in for him or her to land new jobs. So there's like some victory when it comes to um, going on job interviews, defending him or herself, and, you know, making a very good impression, and then landing options. And I just want to say that when it comes to those job options, they might be temporary. They might just be options that you do in the meantime just so that you feel secure, just so you have money flowing through. 
but I don't feel they're going to be permanent. But either way, it is going to restore you or your partner's um, self-esteem because I feel like the more than anything, whenever we lose a job, it hurts our self-esteem and we feel discouraged. So there is hard work to be had when it comes to you know going back out there in the labor market and trying to find good work there is something coming in but I don't feel it's going to be permanent but it's still very very good okay so not to worry and more than anything you know go back to the the end goal here which is that um, what do you need in your life to find emotional stability emotional fulfillment and I feel like for a lot of you the automatic response is you know financial security and um, you can achieve financial security with a partner you don't have to go out and do it on your own okay uh, working together as a unit and also just um, figure out what you really really need and what it is that you're going out looking for and make sure those things are lined up so that you can attract the things that you want okay